In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer the fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory current events portion, so we talk about stuff that's happening in the world, we talk about studies, mm. talk about our own lives. Introductory. Today's episode has a 38-minute uh, intro portion. After that is when we answer the questions. By the way, if you want to see every topic time-stamped, in the podcast. So you could fast forward to your favorite part, go to mindpumppodcast.com. But if you want to listen to the episode the way it was meant to be heard, mm -hmm. start from the beginning. That's right. So I'm going to give you a breakdown. We open up by talking about Cobra Kai. Adam finally finished season two. What a great show. Oh, man. We all got to do karate So again. happy you guys are watching. Then I talk about one of my great realization about my age. Uh, I'm not as old as I thought I was. Then we talk about cravings and alcohol. We talk about using the Instapot and making pork ribs in there. The Instapot, by the way, it falls off the bone. Now, my favorite source of pork ribs is ButcherBox. They use heritage pork. It tastes amazing. ButcherBox also has amazing grass-fed meats. And the way it works is you sign up and they deliver it to your door. Because they deliver it to your door and you eliminate a lot of middlemen, the prices are incredible and the meat is very, very high quality. So if you're interested in improving your health, you want grass-fed meat, you want the protein for the gains, go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. And by the way, if you sign up before the 23rd of September, you'll get ground beef for life. This is a crazy deal. They always run out of this. So hurry up and go over to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Then we talk about Netflix losing a bunch of subscribers because of the show Cuties. Hmm, maybe you shouldn't have done that. Then we talk about how San Francisco might be passing a bill that will allow 16-year-olds uh, to vote. I think they're trying to just crash themselves as yeah. fast as possible. Horrible, horrible ideas. Then we talk about the fitness space and how the demand is strong, but, the sh but there's a big shift that's happening. So a lot of trainers now are building online virtual businesses because a lot of people aren't going to gyms anymore or they're servicing clients at their houses. Nonetheless, this requires new certifications, new education on how to build your business in the new fitness space. Now, we work with a company called NCI. They put out some amazing certifications. And right now, for a limited time, they're offering something tremendous to Mind Pump listeners. If you go to ncicertifications.com forward slash Mind Pump, you'll get a huge, huge amount of certifications for free. They have it all bundled together to teach you how to build more impact and income with your business. It's a huge value, totally free to Mind Pump listeners. Again, it's nci-certifications.com forward slash Mind Pump. Then Justin brought up the new Mandalorian trailer. Trailer That's exciting. Who else is excited? We talk about the, the downsides of the market and how people may be working from home more than ever before, maybe forever. I talk about how rents and property prices are being affected by this new market. And then we get into the questions. So here's the first one that we answered. This person wants to know what the best exercises are for the inner and outer thighs without machines. So we talk about strengthening those areas without access to, to lots of equipment. It's not the thigh master. The next question, this person wants to know what our thoughts are on suspension training. Is it really for everyone? Is it really as effective as people are saying? They must be hearing a lot of people's feedback who've been following MAP suspension. This is a program that's designed around suspension trainers, and we're getting tremendous feedback. Yes, suspension trainers do build a lot of muscle. If you want to follow an organized program, go to mapssuspension.com. The next question, this person uh, wants to know why every time they bulk, no matter how they do it, they just gain a lot of body fat. So we give them some strategies on how to bulk without gaining body fat. In other words, just building muscle. And the final question, this person's uh, a new father, and they're a little worried about when they go to school and how to handle their lunches. Uh, obviously, there's some challenges with other kids eating maybe unhealthy foods. They're going to be eating foods away from them, so you can't monitor. So we give our tips on how to maintain your child's health without uh, making them feel like they need to rebel. Um, also, I mentioned MAP suspension earlier. That was one of our more popular suspension trainer programs. But if you want to find a program that's tailored for you, we have lots and lots of different MAPS workout programs, each one of them designed for different goals and for a different person. So if you want to train your body like a bodybuilder, we have programs for you. If you want to train like a power lifter, if you mm. want to just speed up your metabolism or, or focus on building your butt. Be a better or, athlete. Or if you want to train more like an athlete or if you just want correctional exercise and more, 
you can find all of these programs that we created. This is me, Adam, and Justin with our combined 60 years of personal training experience. We We're an old the, man together. We wrote these programs, uh, and they're very effective. They're written by trainers, not by celebrity fitness influencers who know nothing Actors. about training other people. Here's what you do. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Check out the different MAPS programs. Find the one that works best for you and follow it. You've got everything you need in the program to get in incredible shape. Again, it's mapsfitnessproducts.com. Doggy. Turn on the red turn light. Turn on the red light. Turn on the red light. Yeah. yeah. I finally... Uh, did you finally turn on the red light? I did. And I Ooh. finally watched your guys' uh, season finale of um, Cobra Kai. Oh. So yeah. so you want to know what's funny? My my, my cousins, they have, like, they have little kids, you know? Yeah. And uh, they're setting up their kids for, for karate. Because <laughs> <laughs> of Cobra Kai. No, they are. I Let swear me, to God. So this is this has been my the, my uh, feel about the, the, the show. Okay, right. Started off as like, eh, when it first came out on YouTube two, three years ago, three years ago. I watched a couple episodes and I was like, yeah, a little cheesy, what kind of cool, whatever. Didn't really go back to it. Hits Netflix. Justin keeps raving about it, so I'm like, okay, I got to watch it. So Justin, so far, is ten for ten on his recommendations. Telling you guys, just listen to me. I'm, he's the guy. Yeah. So anyway, continue. I I start to watch, and um, you know, for past the two episodes I'd seen before, and I'm like, okay, it's starting to wheel me in. I, I like it. The the deeper I get, the more brilliant I think the show is, and. I don't think it's brilliant. Like it's oh, it's so ri it's written so great. It's not like a cinematic masterpiece. No. Let me, masterpiece. Or let me tell you what they did. That's so brilliant. They did a really good job with the, all the different types of characters and topics they cover. Mm -hmm. They do like you can be someone probably as young as twelve, all the way up to our age because you of Karate Kid. And they do, and they hit like every age group and mm -hmm. almost demographic in there. So they do a really good job of that. Like, all, uh, all I know is for me, it hit me in the nostalgia bone, like yeah. hard. <laughs> like, Whoa, this is some the fight scene in the bar. It's a major bone, bro. When the <laughs> when the Cobra the fight Kai, scenes are too much, dude. dude. When the Cobra Kai, yeah. too much. And you too know, much. look at here's the deal. If you're my age, you grew up watching this. You identify with all these characters now in their forties, you know. So they're in the bar in their forties, yeah. And some like young dudes are, you know, starting shit with them, and just like, yeah, no mercy. It's like, I still got it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Well, and yeah. every guy our age is like that. You they know? do the yeah. same thing with all the kids in high school, and yeah. they do a good job of like, you know, they, this the what this last second to last episode without being like spoiler. They like they you know they build this rivalry between the two girls. You know, and mm -hmm. so you've got like this girl power struggle going. You've got like the sweet girl who's like tries to be really nice. Then you have like the kind of the hard girl that came from a rough upbringing and like. Well, I love the dynamic of uh, basically like Johnny's son uh, is being trained by Danny, and yeah. then like the back and forth between that and then his daughter, and then the romance. It's like they they intertwined all of those things, uh, you know, that we grew up with with using their kids Dude, too. And, so what, and they brilliantly set up the next season because. Because now, you, you first of all, they're both likable. So in the original Karate Kid, yeah. you don't like Cobra Kai. They're, yeah. they're obviously the bad guys. And Daniel and me, Mr. Miyagi are the good guys. Which I was like the only one that liked them. I don't know. You were, I, was, cause, I was an cause, asshole. Because you were a dick. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. Were, you, you were a bully, You were a Johnny, dude. <laughs> you were a bully, that's why. Oh, you like, were riding around in your dirt bike, you know. <laughs> dude, kicking, but put, like Daniel Russo, he would come back and he would start shit again. They left him alone. He comes back, he pours water over the thing, you yeah. know. He just keeps stoking it. He's still that bully. I'm just saying. He's like, he deserved it. Uh, you yeah, know? He did. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, 100%. now you got Reese coming back. Yo, what's his name? Crease or whatever coming back. Yeah, Crease. And uh, I bet you it's going to be Daniel and Johnny versus, you know, the evil yeah. side of Cobra Kai. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, like it's they're going to team up. Exciting. Yeah. Dude, speaking of- oh, no, I can't wait. <laughs> speaking of exciting old guy stuff. Oh, um, sweet. So uh, I had a huge realization. What's that? Real, re recently. What's that? Uh, it's, I'm not that old. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know what happened? Who lied to you? So, <laughs> yeah. I did. You yeah. lied to yourself. I, I used the filter on, on the <laughs> Snapchat. Yeah. 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 Like, hey, it looked not bad. No, what My happened? Mom told me. You know, you're, you know how you're always a better trainer to your clients than you are to yourself? Right. Whenever I would train, you know, men and women in their 40s and I'd hear them say, ah, oh, it's not like I was when I was younger. And I'd always point out, like, look, you're not as active. Your diet's not as good. Do those things first, see what happens. Failed to do that myself, right? So I'm thinking, ah, just God, I'm, I'm not build. I don't build like I used to. 
my body doesn't respond like it used to. And I'm, you know, having this argument with Make, Jessica. <laughs> making all these excuses. Yeah. Like. And I'm having this argument with Jessica. <laughs> yeah. Like, listen, honey, I know my body, okay? I've been training forever. Like, it's just, it's just older. It's just not responding. Like, anyway, I started doing, you know, right, working out more frequently and boom. Everything's, imagine everything's that. coming back. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a great and stupid realization, you know? Yeah. Oh, look at that. If I just exercise more, my body starts to respond. That's you know? what I notice. Uh, I notice now. And maybe that's because, like, you, I think you've found all the hacks as a trainer, right? I, I definitely do less and less. Like, that's what I find myself. I'm like, oh, what's the bare minimum I can do <laughs> oh, yeah. to maintain my physique this week? <laughs> yeah, I, I found catch, that sweet spot. Yeah, I catch myself having that conversation quite often. <laughs> it's like, that's oh, not my the way I thought just 10 Yeah, and then the years. one time you're like, oh, I still got it. You push it too far, and then you yeah. think, oh, I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you just went too hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you need to be doing this when, more. When the caffeine hits you just right, you play the right you know song from Rage Against the Machine. Oh, yeah. And, and Go a little too hard. Oh, it's you know? real easy to go too like, far. Yeah, it's definitely because I'm old. It's not because yeah. I didn't warm up or yeah. do any priming, you know, whatsoever. We yeah. should come out with a maps, uh, you know, program. Maps like the, the bare minimum. The bare bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, you can have four burgers a week. You know, mm, yeah. one workout a It'll week. Be like maps, dad bod. Maps, yeah. dad. Yeah. How yeah, to yeah. get a dad? How to on, maintain? Hey, honestly, on that on that note, I think mean, it's kind of a good topic and conversation, right? Like, you know, I, I've I've really figured out like, okay. You know, how do you have balance, right? Like, how do you still get to eat these foods that, and not weigh and measure and still enjoy things like a burger and fries every once in a while? And what I have found is that if you're just really hyper aware of the behaviors that, that, that they, they pair together, right? Like, it's you have this tendency of when you're all so lazy or missing workouts, you're also craving the bad food or making the bad decisions. If you can just learn to curb that a little bit and be like, okay, I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to have this burger every once in a while or enjoy this meal. I'm just going to be smart about it and not allow myself to do it when I've also been sitting on my ass for two days in a row. Yeah. And having that balance in itself, just, hey, there's this, like, and this is taking me a long time. Like, I've talked about how I don't ever have ice cream, hardly ever, right? Be That was, like, a major, like, addiction for you. So it took me a long time to, like, allow it in the house and there's this been a, must have been a big deal you always bring it up this I, must it, have been a big yeah. deal for it, well i'm not exaggerating yeah. it when i tell people that like i think people probably think i do like uh, he probably wasn't no for 10 years minimum okay 10 years minimum i ate ice cream every single night how much like, like a pint dude of oh like, my like, god yeah like 1500 every night. every night and i justified it because i, I was fit still <laughs> right so thrifties so, yeah yeah that's that's the go-to man for sure but the, the thing is, though, now is like, uh, and it's taken me like years of like getting it out of the house forever, right? And then allowing it to kind of come back in. And, do I have this discipline? Can I have this carton of ice cream in my freezer and only allow myself to do it when I know that I've been on track with eating, on track with training, and then intermittently allow it? I think it's fine when I do that. Problem is, it's the times I want it most are always the, not after the workout. After I have a great training day and a good diet, I actually rarely crave or want those things because I feel like, oh, I did really good today. I want to keep this momentum going. It's when you when you really want it is normally when you're also not doing shit. And if you can just become aware of that and and balance that better, I find right. it uh, pretty it's easy. When you're to bad, make. when you're in the bad, when you're in that that mood, you know. Yeah, what I, mean? I don't want to work out. Yeah, I'm gonna have ice cream. Fuck right. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm it's so and hilarious. then it's like you can't make patterns out of it. Well, right. dude, I, and it's I, compounding. I don't have any of that stuff in my house because when I get into that space, I know what happened. Like this happened to me the other night while I'm walking around the house, and poor Jessica, right? It's like she, I, I almost get mad at her. I don't get mad at her. But I know she feels it from me because I'm looking through, like, damn, we don't have anything to eat. like, And I'm just looking for snacks. Right, right. I'm just looking for chips or something like that. And she's like, why? Do you right. want me to buy them? And I'm like, no, don't buy them. Yeah. You know, while I'm gritting my teeth because I know what's going to happen. Isn't that a, is that a guy yeah. thing? Is that a guy thing where you get up to the refrigerator and you open it like five times? And like, Yeah, you, he's just looking. Yeah, like, maybe I missed something. Yeah, Katrina yeah. always like, what are you looking for? I don't know. I'm just looking. Uh, yeah. we'll, <laughs> stay, we'll, we'll stay here a minute. Right. Just tell me. I'll tell you if we have it. I don't know. I'm just going to look at it for a minute. Dude, yeah. you, know what, you know what does it Sometimes for me? Sometimes you do find You know what does it for me is, uh, uh, pickles. If I I can eat pickles. If I feel like I want something, pickle does it for me. Really? Yeah. Isn't that mm. weird? You're you a pickle it? eater. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Slice them though. I don't eat them. Okay. Like you do. No. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To each but, their own, right? But it's the it's the saltiness. I think I'm a I'm, I'm not sweet. Like you're like sweets. Yeah. I yeah. don't like sweets. Justin cheese. 
cheese. Uh, <laughs> if something, if I can have some blocks of cheese, salty, then I'm, you know, I'm doing okay. That's Katrina. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Salty or like an alcohol. Alcohol is the other thing. We were talking. Uh, so we have a, a good girlfriend of hers. It's just just got pregnant, and the, the, so this weekend when we're all hanging out, and the, the other couple we're with also has two kids, so it's like all kid and pregnancy talk, mm. you know. And the the girls are all talking about all these different cravings or what was the hardest part with your diet while you're and Katrina was like, yeah, just not having alcohol was the hardest thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, honey, you sound like an alcoholic. Know, it's it's like, uh, it was though when when She's the, like, you tried being married to Adam. The, oh, she was <laughs> my spirit animal. The first thing that she went and enjoyed was it was out and she would always rather that. Like I'm the type of guy who's like, man, we had in fact we were walking downtown Tahoe the, over the weekend and you know, someone's like, hey, let's stop and have frozen yogurt. I'm like, oh, man, I haven't had frozen yogurt in well over a year. Fro-yo. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, let's, let's do that. And Katrina's like, no, 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 I don't I don't want that. I'm like, you don't want like a little, you sure? No, no, no. She's like, I'd rather have a couple glasses of wine tonight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. whatever. Hey, you know, you know, in Europe, um, pregnant women have a little bit of wine. Did you guys know that? It's not a big deal over there. What, mm. Why is that? It, I don't know. For whatever reason, in, in Europe and France, they say, I think half a glass of wine is okay. That's their, That's what they say over there. Over here, it's very much like no alcohol at all. Yeah. You, that- for, yeah, I mean, there's some, I've seen some groups where, where I've seen some ladies that they do like have a little bit of wine and it's not a big deal. No, that's the thing apparently over there. So, yeah. you know, Jessica's got a lot of friends that are international because when she worked for the Cirque du Soleil, a lot of people were either Canadian, French, Russian, you know, a lot of people from outside the country. And she says, yeah, it's, that's they have a, they'll have a little bit and it's not that big of a deal. And I told Jessica, like, don't do that in public here in America because a hundred percent. If I saw a pregnant woman drinking oh, wine, yeah, I'd be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, I remember one time, like, uh, like Courtney was at the grocery store and like, and she was pregnant, and like, I'm like, "Oh, can you grab me?" Like, I was getting oh, her yeah. to buy some beer. <laughs> she got. She's like, "Thanks a whole lot," you know. Like everybody in the store was just. I shame so, her. Katrina's family. I've talked about like how they're like that. They get together all the time, and it's food and alcohol is like the big event. So when Katrina was like nine months pregnant, we were heading over to her family's house, and like they asked us to stop. She runs in the grocery store, and she gets like you know like a, a grocery cart of nothing but alcohol. She got this big belly. She, she, said, she came out, and she said, "You should see the looks." Like yeah, she had to like she kept having to look at people like I'm not drinking yeah. this. This is for somebody else. Yeah, babe, give me a I'm pack, of, have a good a pack of cigarettes and a beer, please. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Hey, this, is, meant, this is getting you back for all the times you maybe buy tampons. Hey, I meant to uh, ask you guys, I, I and is this true? I, I did the theaters open back up? Yeah, I think not here. A but few maybe of them. Center. Yeah, well, I think there's certain uh, <sighs> counties where. Uh, they, they've sort of put them on the low risk, uh, and so we've had theaters in in Santa Cruz. There's a how, few of them. How are movies? Low Is it like I have every no other, idea. It must be every other aisle. It's spaced out. It's or definitely like limited. So there's only a few people allowed in at a time. Like I think uh, you're allowed like a group of four or something, and then uh, like you have to like you cluster together with the people that you kind of came in there with. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's no good movies out. So me and Courtney around. thought about doing that for a date, uh, just because it's like been so forbidden. Yeah. And you know, it's like ooh, it's forbidden. You know, like <laughs> I want to do this. Let's it's go like, watch a movie. Yeah, we used to do this. You guys have sex in the theater. Yeah. Did, uh, <laughs> do the old popcorn move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hey, yeah, no, but grab some terrible movies out right now. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to. You're right, all movie. There's no good movies coming out, but there are. There is They're streaming. Um, well, um, there's a couple superhero ones. I think there's a new um, X Men coming out. Yeah, well, there was supposed to be Wonder Woman, which I was one I a little bit excited about. Can't and, wait. Uh, but yeah, they pushed that out to uh, I think this December or something. But they they were like, we're not going to make any money because they already put another movie out to try and test it out and obviously it, and it did it did really bad yeah huh. hey so what's this thing that we're doing today we're doing like a photo shot all, all i know is i got a message with rachel telling me to make sure i wear my my beater <laughs> yeah what, what, are they, what are we doing I don't you know, know. That's make, not make how a the, fool yourself that's, that's not how the message went the message went I, I don't feel like i should have to tell you this sal but make sure you wear a beater today yeah, and yeah. your response was <laughs> every day yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it hugs me what are we doing did you see i have no idea bro. oh you don't know I, no it's I a surprise i don't know yeah, i have no idea i don't even know it's yeah, not my i side usually know these things yeah. yeah but did you see the uh story that i posted like last week that was for you dude that uh where the four of us old one where yeah when i was in high school the four the four of us all in a picture all holding a beer what is with that too i go i was going back just for shits oh, and giggles I saw, that was hilarious yeah because both of you have been posting a lot of like old pictures of even like throwbacks i'm like you know what i gotta go through my shoe box of photos and see what i can find to throw up there on on uh-huh. stories 
and I found that picture, and I also found a bunch of other pictures. I'm like, when you're when you're like 18 to 20, it's like cool to take photos with alcohol. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just holding. It's, it isn't it up. funny? It's like the opposite now. Like we got we got together and we had like this big group photo, and everybody had like a glass of wine, so that everyone's like puts the alcohol out of the photo. You <laughs> yeah. know, when you're older, I don't want to look like a degenerate, right? So right. Like, <laughs> yeah. When you're a kid, when you're a kid and underage, like it's like faking of like yeah, yeah, grab the beer. We had, I even guzzling did, it. I even did stupid shit like this. Like we. Uh, there's a photo. Like, what the fuck am I ever going to do with this photo? There's a photo of the weekend of alcohol, all the alcohol we drank in the weekend. and we uh, Like a shrine. Yeah, a shrine. We kept it all oh and my. took a photo of it. We used and, to do this with wait, like all, all the bottles of, over the summer yeah. that we drank. And it was like, I got I got really into Crown Royale. And so we had okay, like- Okay, good. I'm not alone on this. We had this, this, this huge just like closet full of bottles of just like Crown and then like the handles. And I'm like- Oh my God, we have a problem. <laughs> Evidence. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. It's like when you're that age, you, you're, you're like, like proud of it. You're like, yeah, look yeah, at this. It, it seems like such a good idea. Like, oh man, I'm going to show everybody how cool I am. Now, did you guys, did you do this too when you were underage as a kid? Did you like, you know, every you smuggle, like you had a, a bottle of, you know, vodka in your closet or hidden somewhere like that and mom ever find it? Did you guys have to, did you do Hell that? Hell no. My mom would clean my room until I moved oh, out. I never, she would have yeah. found that That's shit. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, if I have Sal or, was the kid. Mom made his bed, put his clothes out for the day and shit like that. <laughs> hey, did I ever take Vince Did I ever ironed you? every day, <laughs> socks and yeah. stuff. Old yeah. school Italian mom. It's like totally ruined me. Did I ever tell you guys about the the, the when we she did try to like fight with me over making my bed and it lasted a certain period of time and then she finally gave up. Wait, wait, wait a second. No. When, when is this like when you're 30? Uh, no, no. I didn't move. I moved way out before that. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was 19 or 18. No, 18 when I moved out. But when when I was, I don't know, 15 or 16, mm. I don't know what happened. She just decided all of a sudden she's going to make me do chores. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, it's been a long time. Yeah. You've already trained me one way. special dreams you're having. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. like, you She's better, like hey, you're going to do your bed yeah. for now. That's it. You do your <laughs> own sheets. Gross. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I can't get your that's, ex that's exactly like, how it was. What is this? That's yeah. exactly how it was. She didn't say what it was, what, why it was, but exactly what yeah. it was. You're going to peel the socks off the wall, not yeah. me. <laughs> but she, uh, she, no, she's like, you're going to make your bed before you, every day before you go to school. And I was like, I'm not yeah. going to. And so it was this back and forth. And so what she would do to make her point is she'd rip my sheets off my bed so that I just had a mattress and she thought that would make me make it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead you just you slept on it. Jokes right? on her. Yeah. I just hey. grabbed the blanket <laughs> slept yeah. on the bed. Carried that into college, just slept on the ground. Yeah. So because that, okay, so because that was a thing for you, how do you handle that with your kids now? Do they have to make their bed and yeah. was that a struggle for well, you? Well, so here's the deal. It's It, it definitely wasn't a good thing. Uh, I mean, I, I know where it came from. It came from a good place, but it she I didn't know how to do anything Anything for myself when I moved out. I had to ask my neighbor when I had an apartment, I had to ask my neighbor what soap to use to wash my clothes, how to operate the, the washing machine, a vacuum cleaner, which one's a good one, how to turn on the dishwasher. I put the wrong soap Where's in the there. Power button. Yeah. Uh, like, all, like all this stuff. I had to know any, how to do any of this stuff. So my kids, and thanks to Jessica, really helps trying to keep make them more self sufficient. That's a way better. That's the way you should raise your kids, yeah. not the way I was. I literally moved out and I was like, now what? <laughs> yeah, you know? I had tuna fish sandwiches. Where do I every go? Day for, ah. for, for, for for speaking of food, dude, Instapot. Those things are amazing. I know. Oh, so we got a recipe from Jessica to to use with the Instapot for those ribs. So we're gonna try it out tonight, dude. I'll I let did. You know. So ribs, all ribs are amazing. I did the 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 pork ribs in there. Yeah. Oh my. Gosh. So I've done both, right? So I think that the, the it comes off the bone just you pick it up and the bone falls off. I think it has something to do with the butcher box ribs too. I don't know if it's the size of them or they fit just right in the instant pot, but I've done it with other ribs and it didn't turn out as well. So Really? Yeah. Did you have to do it longer or No, I I think it was maybe that's what I should have done. You know, I I don't maybe I didn't cook it long enough because I did like a other set of ribs in there. I think I did like beef ribs from somewhere else and just didn't turn out the same as the butcher box ones. So uh, I, you know, it depends on what you're using. So if I, I, I think they're the Instapot does great for that, but trying them with a, another another brand or a, like bigger rib, I think it, Butcher Box ribs are like they're smaller. They're mm -hmm. not quite as big as like when you go to the grocery store with uh, like your your hormone fed <laughs> your animals. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the, and, the dinosaur ones. Yeah, and those just don't do as well in in the Instapot. At least that was my experience. Well, so the the I know they use heritage pork. <laughs> And I think that might be why it might be, yeah, because heritage pork is it just tastes better than than other pork. It's got nice marbling. It's easier. To cook. It's better to cook. 
So that might be one of the reasons. Well, I'll why. tell you, when I the first time I did it, I knew it was going to be good when I, I went to grab it out of the Instant Pot, and it, it literally, I grabbed it by the bone, and it just came right That's on. That's what happened. It just fell. Yeah. That's, That's what like happened. It slides right off. Oh, well, the, the other thing we've been doing is we've been buying uh, short ribs over at um, the Asian market uh, over here in San Jose. Mm-hmm. Ever since Doug made that recipe with, oh, the, yeah. with the, the, remember when I, when oh, I the, set the barbecue on fire? The, yeah. the Mexican restaurant's better for that. What do you mean? They have a better, I think personally. So that's like Katrina's uh, brother's. Were you, thing. Are you going to the butcher there? Yeah, they well they have they have a uh, the, the, the I forget the name of the the grocery store. It's but it's a it's a Mexican grocery store, and they have like the the butcher has like already seasoned short ribs, and they're they're amazing. So we made a, a that's, mar- what, that's what attracted our bear last time. <laughs> oh <laughs> to, really? Yeah, to like fourteen pounds of that stuff. So we made a marinade with like soy sauce and. Yeah, I don't even remember anything else we put in there. Ginger, onion. I don't know. We made this marinade that we found online. Marinated it for a few hours. Put them in the in the Instapot, and it. Just, and what's crazy about the Instapot is like it's five minutes, six minutes. Yeah. And it comes out, and then you put them under the broiler a little bit just to yeah. kind of you know make the color nice and the texture nice. It's incredible. So I'm like reorganizing because like eventually I'm gonna get uh, like work done on my house and like my kitchen remodeling. There's a lot of remodeling in my future, and I'm trying to like see all those different uh items like that that i want to include so like the air fryer was one of those you guys keep talking about it yeah. haven't used that yet but that's and we've been doing a lot of stuff uh uh in oh, the crock pot and all that kind of stuff but like yeah the air fr- air uh, uh what's the other air, one fr- air fryer and instapot and instapot yeah. yeah those have been game changers. yeah there's but also the slow cooker <clears throat> instapot slow cookers make really good um what do they call them crock pot yeah. Those make really good, uh, like. Stews. And I got to get a Traeger, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I got to get one of those. The only drawback of the Traeger, you right? don't need one now. <laughs> right now, you just put your food outside. Well, yeah, the, the yeah, nice, it's nice and smoky. Oh, that's, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. You get a little ash on it, though. That's the only. thing. No, I, I absolutely love mine. Um, the only drawback of it is it's not, a, it's not a fasting, right? So I have a gas grill, and then I have the Traeger, right? And the Traeger is when I, I'm on, I'm in the mood on a Friday or a Saturday, and I want to grill for like four to six hours. Like it's not. Yeah, it's a, a long process. Process. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you, when you go back and you go like, okay, how often do I want to grill for four or six hours? It's normally a weekend thing. Or you is got, this like a golf thing where you're like, honey, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be outside for four no, hours. No, totally. <laughs> that is what, hey, it's another dad yeah, you hack. you control it all on your and phone the, though, right? Yeah. You don't have to manage you, no, it. No, no, he's got to watch. The yeah, video. you got to watch oh, it. You, you, don't tell, you, don't, yeah, you don't tell the wife that you oh, can yeah, control from the phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll be back. I don't mean to get that cigarette I'm cooking. I'm outside cooking, okay? Yeah, it's it. For sure. Golf and Traeger barbecues are the dad hack. That's how you escape. I'm busy looking at the meat. Oh, and washing your car. Those are the three, right? So I'll go, I'll go get the cars washed. I'll be back, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I haven't vacuumed it yet. Yeah. Bring it to the kids' house. Yeah, yeah wash it real quick. I gotta, That's I why I built things outside. Now you guys know. Yeah. Well, at least I mean it's good stuff though. You're doing good things. You know. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's hilarious. But hey, the 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 Instapot makes the meat just fall right off the bone, and so that's like the way we're gonna make it from now on. Yeah. Uh, forget the oven. That's just the way to do it. Yes. Yeah, delicious. Hey, do you guys see what's happening in Netflix? Well, other right. than that freaking Cuties. cutie, yeah. Is that they, what you're talking about? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. They're getting a lot of heat for that. Well, so- Good. So, okay, so people people who aren't aware, um, which is good if you're not aware, that means you're not following all the crazy news that's going on all the time, but yeah. there's this, uh, this, this, I guess this movie that-, that uh, uh, it, it I guess sexual, it, sexualizes little girls. Uh, yeah, hi, it's it's showing these eleven year old girls doing things that are just. I, I guess it's very tough to watch. And now the person, the maker of the movie, saying it's about is, a girl who's from like a conservative family, and her way she rebels is she starts a twerking team with like you know I think ten other girls. Now to be fair, I haven't watched it. I don't want to watch it because no. I'm already the, the cover alone makes me. Un- and I, I don't even like watching pageants with little kids. Exactly. I don't even like watching that, let alone something like where they're twerking or whatever. But Apparently, people are up in arms because they're saying this is sexualizing children, um, and so Netflix is under fire for it. They, their cancellations uh, eightfold over the weekend went up. Whoa, eightfold! So they know they have a normal you know amount of cancellations that happen right. times eight, and it seems to be accelerating. Good. Whoa! So this is, I mean, it's a market response, right? You know, see what well, happens. Well, you, you know what I thought was interesting about that, right? So I didn't see it either, I've just, I, but I have read the news on it. Is I've never seen such a discrepancy between critics and actual viewers, right? You know how Rotten Tomatoes does the the critics is for the tomatoes, and then the so the, yeah, the popcorn. creepy critics are, huh? Well, yeah, that's why it's so weird. It's like they gate like there's a lot of critics that gave it eighty something, eighty mm. something percent, and anything over sixty is normally a pretty solid solid movie. But then it's three 
3% for the people that watched it. So there's only, you know, and the 3% at least probably one and a half are pedophiles, right? So there's right. there's only, only like one and a half percent of the people, weird people out there that actually think that that was a good film. Well, you have uh, the two politicians who are pushing against it the hardest. Tulsi Gabbard, she's a Democrat. I uh, actually like her. I like a, her a lot. Yeah, I like her quite a bit. Um, she did this whole thing talking about how it's like you're fueling, it's soft core pedophilia, you're fueling... Uh, these these things in people, this needs to be taken down. She's then, the one that called out Netflix, right? Uh, she called them out. Ted Cruz, uh, who's a Republican, <laughs> says that they need to be investigated uh, for it. Now, some people are saying it's actually making the case that children are being hypersexualized, and so the whole thing is to bring awareness around it. I feel like you can bring awareness around it in better ways, but I don't know. That, I, well, I, the, the people that I've seen that actually defended, that's their thing, is like th they're saying, like, you know, a bunch of you need to wake up. This is what your daughters are already doing. So if they got TikTok, they got all this stuff, they're they're doing shit like this. And so all of you that are, you know, pointing the finger and making a big deal about this probably should look in the mirror and pay attention here's, to what your your, your here's daughter's the thing. Sure that too, but it was Netflix <laughs> conscious decision to put it in the right, their, right. Their not, catalog. By no means am I defending. And also it. Not, and also look, you know, okay, you're making the case or whatever, but you know what trips me out? Were the parents of these kids actors. You know, you imagine yeah. your kid is 11 trying to be an actor. Yeah, and yeah. They, and that, you, that's been the story forever. Like uh, what parents are you bringing their kids to Hollywood to do just whatever, just to get them uh, screen time. That's it's a like they'll do bro, whatever. You know what that is. That's a that's a parent that's living vicariously yes, through their totally. child. That they didn't make it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's an extreme example of putting the, them in harm's way of the, you know, I mean, I, I got to, this will be my issue. Like trying to push my kid into basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. live out my dream that I didn't finish. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, dad, I want to play the piano. Yeah. You're playing basketball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what you're <laughs> doing. If you dribble at the same time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it'll be but like I, I, I don't understand some of these parents that, you know, even look at my, I have a 10 year old who's about to turn 11. First off, I would never put her in any kind of modeling or acting. I think that's a terrible message to give your kid that you're valued for your appearance at that young age. I don't think that's a good thing. No. There's a reason why young actors grow up always to be messed Just up. Just completely messed. But let's say I did. Let's say I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. Uh, I wouldn't even want my 11-year-old to cuss in a movie because that's her part. It's like, nah, it's inappropriate. You know, she shouldn't be so, doing well, it, even though she's acting. Speaking of kids uh, doing things too early, did I hear a rumor that, that somewhere in California trying to pass 16-year-old to be able to vote. Did I hear some shit like oh, that? Oh, San Francisco. What? Yeah. It's <laughs> on the ballot. <laughs> just, just it's going to blow us yeah. off. <laughs> That's the last straw. Oh, <laughs> can I just tell you, old man Justin's my favorite Justin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't, man. It's like too much. No, so there. it's on the ballot to allow 16-year-olds to vote in local elections is on the ballot. That's so smart. What a terrible idea. That, yeah. What a sixteen-year-old? They have great ideas, don't they? Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, oh, we hey, we just passed an initiative: free pizza Wednesdays in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing, dude? You know? Yeah. Oh, we just passed a new law: you can't ground your kids anymore. Dude, it's considered abuse. They're so lazy; they don't even want like to get their license anymore. Yeah, you know, know. they'd rather just get driven around, drive me around, man, so I can stay on my phone, man. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> old man, just you know? again? Like, dude, he's so like entitled. He's the best. No, but kids uh, are. They're younger now than they were before. What I mean by that is it's clear that adolescence is getting stretched out. Part of that is because the skills required to enter the workforce, there's more skills. It's been happening forever, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it, my grandfather's generation, an 18 year old was like a 30 year old or something today, right? So it keeps happening. So I don't understand why they want to lower the, the voting age. A 16 year old today is like a 10 year old. 50 years ago in terms of responsibilities and worldly, right, right. you know, understanding right. and knowledge. Yeah. So it just, <laughs> it just yeah. Horrible idea. Yeah, so it just doesn't make any I sense. I got a positive thing for you guys. So I got a bunch of DMs that uh, related to the conversation we had just the other day about the increase of people that saying that they're never going to go back to the gym, like 50% now or some ridiculous number. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the trainer, I get, anytime we talk about stuff like that, like I get all the trainers that work in gyms, like sending me messages like crazy. Like, oh my God, what am I going to do if the gym doesn't open or I, I'm feeling it already? And, you know, I this is another reason why I really like our partners, uh, NCI. They're always thinking about stuff like this in ways that they can actually help out these trainers. And so the, he's, they, and Jason's doing a, what, what is it, Doug? It's like basically a, a uh, free, it's free, right? 100% free for our audience? Yes. And it's, it, go ahead. It's called Build Impact and Income. So yeah. it's a whole course, essentially, or a bunch of courses teaching you how to build And they're doing uh, it free, business. free for our listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, hey, look, so I'll tell you what, it, the, fi the fitness industry is definitely being challenged, but not because the demand for fitness went down. People need to understand that. Right. 
if there's it's a, even more essential now. Yeah, so if there's a drop in demand for fitness, then everybody's kind of screwed. But what we're seeing in the fitness space is a shift in how you're going to deliver fitness. So this is not a bad thing. If anything, if you're smart, this presents some incredible opportunities. So our friend Marlon uh, Shamel, who he'll be appearing on our YouTube channel pretty soon, real smart trainer, knows his stuff. I think what's his Instagram? I think it's uh, Marlon. Uh, is it Marlon Fitness or Shamel Fitness? Yeah, something like. That. Anyway, really, really smart dude. Great trainer. He was training a lot of clients in, uh, you know, personal training studios. Obviously, obviously, everything happened. They shut down. Smart dude. He's very proactive. He went and built his online business, and he's like, he goes, dude, I'm more successful than I than I ever was before. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm doing online training and I'm meeting, you know, higher paying clients at their houses, he's like, I'm doing a lot better. So that's the thing is that. You can't. It's not a, a reduced demand. Uh, demand for fitness. pivot and evolve. Totally, it's not a reduced demand. It's just a shift. Don't you feel that's it's kind of hap- That's what's kind of happening in, in like not just our space. I feel like that's what this what's weird about this time we're going through. Right. We keep talking about like this yeah. how hard the economic times are, but then there's this other side of people that are having tremendous success. Yeah. It's almost just like the way we've done business. Uh, for so long, many of these things are being disrupted because of yeah. COVID. I'll tell you All what, these institutions are completely having to change and it's forced to change. Dude, I'll tell you what, if you're looking for, let's say you're a student right now and you want some part-time work to support yourself or not, you just, you just want to have, a, a, you know, make more money or whatever. The opportunities for these delivery services are crazy. Yeah. You know, right, still to this right now, buying groceries and having someone bring them to your house right now, there's still a shortage of people doing that because so many people want to buy groceries and have them delivered. Uh, you can obviously order food that way with DoorDash. And uh, I know uh, who else is doing that? Um, there's lots of companies, in essence, that are now hiring contractors to go out and just deliver goods and services. Mm-hmm. Huge demand for that. So you could do really well. And it's very, very flexible. Well, you know? yeah, I, I I was stoked this morning. Somebody told me that the new Mandalorian trailer was out. Oh. And because you guys brought up Cobra Kai, I got to say, like, this is another one I'll put my stamp on. I just watched the trailer. I'm really excited about it. It's like, dude, we've been so devoid of any kind of entertainment because nobody's been able to film anything, yeah. uh, let alone, you know, put something new out there. So this is like finally October 30th, I guess, is the, the release date for that. But it's like one of those like staple shows that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that and ignoring uh, – uh, all the burning that's happening. Well, is it going to baby Yoda? Is it going to kill it for you when they're all wearing COVID masks? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all wearing helmets anyway, so who gives a shit? Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, at that point, that's great. You yeah. know, speaking of trainers that were on are on our YouTube, did you see the video that Serene shared this morning with Simon Sinek? No, I didn't see it. So she shared a video on Simon Sinek who was addressing this. Uh, you know, will will office space uh, just like die, and and will you know companies like Twitter saying that we'll we'll remain you know, the ability for people to work from home. What's your guys' thoughts on that? Do you think that, and we're talking about how, you know, business is going to be done so different. Do you think we're going to move to a model where nobody really comes into offices anymore? What's your thoughts on that? I think it'll be hybrid. I don't think so. Yeah. I think it'll be more hybrid. I think you're seeing more people than before staying at home. I still think there's value in people meeting for meetings or events to for that team atmosphere, mm-hmm. but I think it's going to be much more hybrid. Uh, than yeah, it was I think before. it'll be less frequent, like uh, you know, but the, they'll definitely find value from that person-to-person interaction because uh, it creates a whole different dynamic. And a lot of times, it's just I think it's more the creative process in in really just kind of tying in different departments together. Like I think that's essential for people to have real interactions to accomplish you know bigger goals but then maybe disperse and and work remotely uh, as a, after that I, I agree know. this is so that's the case that he's making right so he talks that he's he's built a a virtual business for the last 10 years and he goes anybody who thinks that that's easier or better is is ridiculous it's just not he says it's it's way harder to build trust it's re- way harder to build a culture it's way harder to get everybody engaged mm-hmm. and working together he goes you know so this idea that there's companies that think that they're going to go full virtual and and never come back to the office and are selling office spaces or moving out of that he goes i don't see that but he and he, he did you know and i don't know if they're publicly traded maybe let's, is we work publicly traded 
Oh, are those the, the are you rent space? Yes. Or, oh, I could see that exploding. Oh, it is. It's already exploding, yeah, yeah. and hit, and hit, and I do. I I can get behind this. Like I do see a lot of companies doing that. He said already. Like a lot of these big companies have signed big contracts with WeWorks. So instead of them owning their own office building and managing, you know, this massive thing, they just rent out X amount of spaces so many times per month, and then you still have some of these in person. They meetings. save a bunch of money. That are they way. publicly traded? Not yet. Oh. Damn it. Yeah, keep, so, keep an eye on. Oh, them. so they they were trying to go IPO, but they didn't. That I would invest in that hundred percent because yeah. uh, there's a couple opportunities here. One, so it was a bad investment last year. I I brought this up on the podcast before, so I because I thought it would be a smart investment for it, and it ter- supposedly they don't make as that much money, and it might have been why it was a failed IPO. So read more on it before you just go decide that you're going to invest in it because it was a t- it would be a terrible investment just last year based off the news I was reading. Yeah. But it's interesting what's happening right now. It might be something that would be smart to look I think into. a hybrid model is going to be best where people mostly work at home and then they meet together for projects or mm-hmm. for events, for the team building aspect. I think the employees which essentially are the consumers there when you know when you think of it that way are going to drive it. I think a lot of people value the flexibility of being able to work at home. I think it would be smart to build something similar to what we have here, but let's pretend this we have like let's say that front area we design more office spaces. Imagine if we did that where we part-time rented it out. So we don't use it all that time, all the time. Right. I mean our staff is rarely ever here. You know, they're here intermittently, but when they were not, if we actually had it more organized and scheduled to where it's like, oh, why not just lease out all the offices in the mm-hmm. front to all these people and almost become like your own little mini WeWork. Well, dude, I, I'm, I'm another opportunity I'm thinking about is a commercial space. It's going to, it's got to crash because oh, I'd be uh, afraid to touch that. Oh, dude, uh, uh, you know, storefront. Uh, facilities already are just shutting down left and right. No, it's just, already it's already dipped over twenty five percent. There you go. And then on top of it, you have these massive offices, right? I know Pinterest paid, you yeah. know, I don't know, eighty nine million dollars something to end so their, did, their R- lease. So did REI. REI built a massive. Yeah, thing what are they going to do with all these buildings? How are they going? Yeah, I see. I, you, it's gonna I, pr- uh, probably plummet in price. Oh, it's, and then it's already it's already. And there's going to be huge opportunity. The question is, do you want to be the person to jump on that? Like. I mean, we and may wins be the bottom. We, we exactly. We yeah. may be in a time of just business operating different. I mean, yes, I don't think there's going to be like complete remote for everybody, but I do think that there's a lot of companies that that thought they needed a storefront that are going to get away, go away from that. And so with right. everything happening in that, and then you let's say as an investor, we go, oh man, this building would normally cost us, you know, a million dollars is on sale for half a million right now, and we could lease it for X amount. Oh, this is great. Let's buy it, and then it just sits. Yeah, because nobody's wanting Dude, to do that right now. You you have that on top of the 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 fear of increased crime in urban areas. So the reduced storefront businesses now no longer needing to be the hubs of work and business because more people working virtually. We could be seeing the largest migration of people from urban areas to suburbs that we haven't seen since the 1960s, hmm. where the, where they really started to really build out suburbs. You're already starting to see it. Yeah, I know that rent in San Francisco is going down like it's never had before. New York City, people are living these leaving these big cities, going to suburbs, and on top of it, collapsing commercial you know real estate prices. This this may be we may see a huge migration of people out of the big cities. It's weird. Yeah. It's 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 weird to try and uh, predict because it, I mean I think I've been wrong already trying to predict when we're going to see this. We should have seen it. I feel like we should already see like this this crash happening. We're already heading into the the back half of the year, right? And you've got this is typically when you would see a decrease in real estate. You start to see it starting to plummet right now. And you just don't see it. I mean, I'm I'm on there daily looking at properties, and it's they're still bidding because the supply is artificially limited. <clears throat> they're they're not putting them on. You have a lot of foreclosures and stuff. That's I happening. guess I don't know though, dude. It's just it's it's weird. There's I I know that has some what to do with it. So I don't disagree with you. Like there's de- the banks are holding back on a, a bunch of these foreclosures. Also, and- I think there's a lot of um, opportunists with a lot of money mm. who are coming in buying cash. They're yeah. buying these properties cash, you know. But once that stops a little bit, we should see a decline. I well, don't know. The question, so that I agree with you, but the, here's the question: If we, if if you agree that we're in this this K market right now, right, where the the middle to low class are struggling more and more, losing jobs, unemployment's raising in that class, 
And but then you have the other side if the upper class is making more and more money, is that is it going to slow down or is that just creating more opportunity for these people that are making more money to swoop up these properties? I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. see. I know rent's gone down uh, quite a bit um, in the Bay Area. <laughs> I've been following that. San Jose rents are going down. San Francisco rents went way down, which ha I've never seen happen. Yeah. Rents always through the roof over Yeah, there. what did you say San Francisco? How much did they reduce the, uh, on average? Do I you think do? it was 9% or 10%. But I, like my brother alone, he he his lease was up. And in order to keep him, they gave him like three free months and dropped his rent a whole bunch, which is insane over there. When he first moved over there, uh, he, it was like a bidding war to get to get an apartment. I feel like it peaked. It was the ultimate like inflation possible. Like it was so expensive to live there. Any kind of square footage was outrageous. The amount of price they're asking. Now, it, it's still happening though. Like so, yeah. I Katrina called a place this morning. I sent her over two places. Hey, check this place out. They're like kind of like these ranch home places. And I said, look and see what they what they want. What all what all the rules? Blah blah blah. Both, she messaged me back just like 30 minutes ago. Both of them got offers for more for rent than what they're being offered at. Mm, that's so, weird. Do you man. think they're playing the game where they're trying to go low to yes, get bids? That's what I think is happening. So what you're seeing and you're yeah. like, oh shit, it's all lower. It's like, no, everyone that I've called, just so you know, both for sale and for rent, yeah. you and call the them. Bidding wars. Yeah, you know what? Like, it might be the price range you're looking at because I'm wondering if the nice places aren't really getting hit and what they're looking at is an average you know what I'm saying? No, you're right. Exactly. So what is happening? It, it, again, it goes back to this K mar this K market, right? That we're seeing you're, the the higher end is not being affected as much because there's still those people that are that are paying those. The lower end might. So if you're looking at San Jose rents and you're reading articles that are telling you that are going down, sure, maybe somebody who pays twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a month rent is getting some some. Uh, wow, I, so I just pulled up an article right now. There's several of them that say them. This is and this is as of late August this year. So this is pretty recent. It says San Francisco rents are down 20% from their peak. That's a big drop. Yeah, okay. Wow. So now that's okay. Think about that. 20% down from their peak. Yeah. Okay, well, we're already at the the low time of the year when they're supposed to go down anyways. If you if you did not find a renter by Labor Day weekend, everything starts to drop now anyway. So how by what percent? Well, is think that about it this is way: it nine, is ten percent normally what they drop now? So it's another ten percent. Uh, San Francisco is an interesting market because it didn't. There was <clears throat> for a while you weren't you weren't getting anything going down. It was like bid every time. Yeah. But like, give you an example: a three thousand dollars a month one one bedroom apartment, which is actually not a bad price in San Francisco. Twenty percent drop in that six hundred dollars. You know, that's yeah. a big. That would be a big drop. So. Yeah. So, but I mean, they're losing people. They're they're bleeding like crazy, and I think we're seeing a migration because you know what's happening in the suburbs, suburb uh, areas. Rents um, are, and some of them staying stable, and property values are going up in some suburbs. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, in the Tahoe area and Truckee area, yeah, people in San from San Francisco are going over. I have a buddy who has a a, a condo. It's like a three bedroom condo. He got two offers, not one, two offers. Somebody offered him like fifty grand for three months. That's crazy. So it's man. probably like a wealthy tech guy or something, or girl or a couple who are like, we just want to go live in in, in the woods for a few months. Mm -hmm. So here, we'll give you a bunch of money so we can get out of the city. Yeah. But I mean, that's crazy when you see offers. Now, like that. when he got, an, is he does he uh, rent his place or is that just someone like cold called? No, he has it on Airbnb. Okay, so, so he does short term rentals normally. He, and well, somebody... I, no, he don't really does long term. So where people rent for a year or whatever, but he's got someone who's coming out, so he put it on Airbnb just to see what whatever. Yeah, and then he gets hit with that. Two. That's awesome. Two separate <laughs> offers for yeah. just an insane amount of money, and I, I'm we're starting. And I think last time I read in that area, property values have gone up like ten or fifteen percent. Twenty three. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's high. A Interesting. Mm -hmm. First question is from Sirach three two two eight one. What are the best exercises to target inner and outer thighs for females that don't have to be done on a weight machine? Okay, so this so here this is an interesting one because uh, especially when I was training in big gyms, these machines were super popular, right? Mm. The, Suzanne Summers was trying to get on. This yeah, one. the thigh yeah. master, right? Mm. In in their the the abductor. Isn't that still machines. the number one uh, fitness tool sold of all time? By all time, far, right? Yep. By yeah, yeah. far, wow. it's, I don't Landslide. remember how much she sold. Maybe Doug can look it up, but it's in the it's in the insane amounts. Yeah, uh, and it was literally a. a a spring you spring. put between your legs that you squeezed and <laughs> brilliant. Now the reason why these were so popular is because of the myth of spot reduction. Okay, so uh, the myth if spot reduction says that you can burn body fat from an area if you train that area, and because especially the female market wanted their legs to look better and they wanted to be leaner in their inner and outer thighs, they were attracted to these machines that trained 
the muscles of the inner outer thighs with the false belief that these that training those areas then would make my inner thighs leaner and outer thighs uh, leaner. Oh wow, a hundred a hundred million dollars back then. That's a Oof. lot, dude. Yeah, yeah hundred million dollars of sales. Um, so no, you can't spot reduce. If you burn body fat, your body burns it from wherever it wants. It typically follows your genetic pattern. Um, so it's a systemic kind of fat loss. Now you can target muscles. And by targeting muscles, you can make them stronger and firmer. But here's the thing with inner and thigh, uh, inner mus- thigh muscles and outer thigh muscles. Rarely do I train them to sculpt them. No. Because they're small muscles. It's not going to, it's like tr- using the time to do that. You're better off doing lunges or squats or, or hip The only thrusts. person you would consider, I, or personally, unless we're doing corrective stuff, the only person really I see doing that for is like a competitor who is like trying to shape their legs, like actually build to their, an extreme level. Yeah. To an extreme, like trying to build their inner thighs. And mm-hmm. that's the reason. But the question is always asked. Like I never get somebody like that. It's always somebody who wants to, you know, thin out their legs or lean down, and they're asking that question because they want to do exercises, thinking that that's going to make mm-hmm. their inner thighs look better. And the truth is, those those are all like like leg swings and hip adduction, adduction. Those things are uh, tube walks. These are small exercises. You would be far yeah. better off doing step ups, lunges, yeah. squatting. You know, those types of movements are going to train all of the legs, burn more calories, burn, build more muscle, speed up your metabolism. Those are going to do way more bang for your buck than trying to find these exercises where you lay on the ground and you do these leg lifts or kick outs or do these exercises where you're, you're isolating a smaller muscle of the legs, you're going to be far better off training the big gross motor movements for your legs that's going to burn more calories, burn more body fat. There's definitely functional benefit to training these muscles yes. and especially uh, like a lot of it resides in the frontal plane and like stabilizing lateral forces and so um, in terms of lunges, I, I just love those because it it's it's a great way to uh, you know train those muscles, but in a functional way, you're actually going to be moving uh, side to side like that, and it's not just a like an isolation thing where I'm trying to build and and, and hypertrophy those muscles. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's an overall thing though. If you want nice legs, you got to train your entire body uh, to respond that way. Yeah, Cossack squats. Yeah, it, Cossack yeah, squats yeah, that's great. great. If look for correctional exercise purposes, they're great. If yeah. I'm tra- Training someone. That's that the has, exception to me, right? That's it, right? If you have a hip imbalance, you know, knees cave in or out and it's coming from the hips or you're unstable um, or you have hip pain and, and this may be one of the reasons why you have hip pain. Then you'll see me prescribing, you know, clamshells or True. leg swings or tube walking. You need to help your knee track better. Yeah, you know, but there's not reasons to for that. not to build these muscles because they, they're small. They really don't build. And I'd build more. I'd build more muscle there or sculpt more effectively with a barbell squat or a hip thrust or a lunge. So, you know, okay, what are the best exercises to target these areas? Well, first off, without a machine, if it's for correctional purposes, tube blocking is really good. Uh, Clamshells are really good. Side planks is a good, uh, you know, stabilizing exercise for the outer thighs. You could do leg swings, which are really good. For the inner thighs, you could place things in between your knees and squeeze them while you do things like squats or hip thrusts to activate those those inner thighs. And then, you know, some of the best stuff that I feel to be the most functional that takes it a little step further. So if you're done with correcting, but you want to continue to work on those areas, do lateral movements, you know, lateral walking by with dragging a sled or lateral lunges Mm -hmm. um, or even curtsy squats. You're going to do, it's going to be much more effective than isolating these muscles. Next question is from Nicolette Kayla. What are your thoughts on TRX training? Is it really for everyone? So TRX is a brand name for suspension trainers. It's kind of like uh, Kleenex, Kleenex is for right. tissues exactly. or, you know, uh, rollerblades are for inline skates. So so suspension trainers, are they for everyone? Yes, they're, they're one of the most versatile pieces of equipment that you can find anywhere because you can change the angle and the leverage to where I could train my grandmother on suspension trainers or I could train somebody as strong uh, and as mobile as Justin and make it just as effective uh, for both people because of the way I can change the angles. Um, it's one of the best ways to do body weight exercises. You can build muscle on them. They're great for stability. You get a lot of core stability in almost everything you do with suspension trainers. Um, if, if you're advanced and you're skeptical, try it. Try, For example, follow like MAP suspension. So we put together a whole workout that's all geared around suspension trainers. 
follow it, change the angles to suit your intensity, and then come tell me that you didn't find tremendous, you know, muscle building and fitness value. The joint stability and mobility you get yes, from this infant. I'm amazing. That's what I, I shared recently my my sister, right? And I've just talked to her the other day of how it's going. She's like in love with it. I mean, she's got every one of our programs, but she works for the company, right? So she's gone through everything that we have and she hasn't been so excited about a program as much as she's been excited about the suspension training. She always deals with inflammation, chronic pain, and she's always telling me like after like, going through something like, hey, what do I do for this? What do I do for that? And I'm helping her out. She's like, I've never felt so good as I have going through the suspension program. And I think that just a lot of that has to do with it does challenge a lot of stability. It just it It's going to build that into the program without you like going after mm -hmm. it. And a lot of the movements, like for example, like doing a push up on a suspension trainer, allows you to go in this deeper range of motion um, because of the way your elbows will track and the instability of the strap. And so that just makes people's shoulders feel amazing mm -hmm. after doing it. And honestly, I after talking to her, I started incorporating it more into my routine. I hadn't, I hadn't done it in a long time, and so we have it both at the Tahoe House and in here now, strapped up on the squat rack. And I, you know, probably do two or three exercises in every of uh, uh, every one of my routines lately, and it's been with a suspension trainer. Yeah, yeah I love tool. it because it's like, uh, I mean, it it basically combines that mobility and body weight. Uh, exercises and it's basically like a progression of if I'm just doing uh, mobility drills and a lot of times it, it's kind of hard because you don't really you really have to pay attention to your angles you have to be able to see yourself you got to you know the direction of it uh, you know could could change and the TRX sort of organizes all that for you it, it takes you uh in a specific direction uses all those gravitational forces and it provides that instability so now you have to overcome that and it's just it's an easier way to to really teach the body how to stabilize properly properly build strength and stability around the joint and it's a totally different stimulus than just lifting weights all the time dude one of my I, new favorite arm building pumping uh, supersets now is with suspension trainer. I go from curls, so obviously I stand at an angle, so I'm leaning away from the suspension trainer, and I'm doing curls, and my elbows are in position like you would find with like a preacher curl, and then immediately after that, I go into body weight skull crushers, and the range of motion is phenomenal, and the pump I get is incredible. It's, my new, it's one of my new favorite supersets for arms, and it's done without any weights. Next question is from A. Andrew Reed. Every time I bulk, I feel like I inevitably put on too much body fat, specifically around my midsection. No matter how slow or clean the bulk is, I always see midsection fat appear. What is the best way to combat this, or at least keep it to a minimum? Well, there, there's a couple things here. Um, the, the, the person's saying no matter how slow or clean Yeah, I you got to read between the lines here. Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, if you did it, just right, you shouldn't put on a lot of body fat at all. Um, but you also got to keep this in mind. In a bulk, you have a, a calorie surplus, which inevitably is going to increase naturally, probably sodium, probably carbohydrates, which is also going to increase your water retention. And a lot of times we notice that in the mm -hmm. stomach area more than anywhere else. So first you have to understand that that may be happening. But if you're actually taking your body fat test, and you test it uh, before the bulk, and then you test it, say, six or 10 weeks or whatever later, and you increase dramatically in body fat, then you're not going as slow as you think you are. You're, you're adding way more calories than you need to. And I think that, and I know Sal will probably go this direction, is that uh, talking about how little of calories you need to actually bulk and build. And, there's, and I think this is uh, perpetuated by the, the bodybuilding community because that's just how they've done it forever. And we see them and they're like, the, like some of the best physiques out there. So we assume that they do it the best and they really don't. I mean, this was one of the things that I thought was really interesting when I got into competing is the way that competitors bulk and cut. They just go so extreme. And I, I think many of them don't realize how taxing that is on the body, how ridiculous that is with putting on that much body fat than trying to cut, the stress that you put on the body, the actual muscle that you end up building. It's not very it's not very manageable. You don't see a big difference when you put on 20, 30 pounds and then you decide to cut for a show and then you end up netting one pound of muscle. Like That's ridiculous. That doesn't even make sense. You'd be far better off going really slow. So if you're testing your body fat and it's definitely going up, then you're, you're not going as slow as you think you are. But if you're going based off how you look 
and you feel like you're thicker, you're fuller, and you feel like you, it, you're putting on body fat, on your, it also may be you're holding more water because you're increasing calories, sodium, and carbohydrates. Yeah, it, it, so when I hear this, um, no matter how slow I go, I gain body fat around my midsection, like what's going on? It sounds to me like you probably didn't track, okay? You probably didn't know how many calories you're eating before, and you didn't know what your macros were before, and you didn't know after when you started bulking. So what may be a slow bulk to you, you may be totally miscalculating because you're not actually tracking. So whenever people are like, I don't know what's happening. My body's just gaining body fat, or I don't know what's happening. I'm just losing weight, and I don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening because you don't know what's happening. You got to track and really see what's happening and what you're eating and what you're consuming and how much it is taking for you to gain body fat and then go below that because however slow you think you're bulking, it's obviously too much. Here's the other part of it is if you're not sending a good muscle building signal, if your workout is not uh, effective for your body, then increasing calories will turn into body fat and not be turned uh, into muscle. You still got to have an effective workout. That's the other part of it because you know I've done this with other clients where we look at their workouts, they'll bump their calories a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're not getting stronger. They're not building more muscle. And it's the workout. Your yeah. workout's not effective. You assimilate those calories. Yeah, let's change your workout, send the right signal. By the way, when you send the right signal, your body wants to build muscle. It literally wants to. And so increasing your calories a little bit, you'll notice more strength and more muscle and less body fat. Next question is from Rudy's One More Fitness. I'm having a son soon, and my biggest concern is when he is school-aged and needs to have a packed lunch. I really don't want him eating this garbage school food, but I feel like it's hard to meal prep for a child. What have you done or plan to do? Yeah, so this is a kind of a tough one, mm. mainly because you're not the only influence over your child, especially when they start to go to school. Mm. They will be comparing their food to other kids and what my friends are eating, and then you don't want to create a situation where you know, like I have friends like this where their parents were so ridiculous and strict that as soon as the kids moved out of the house, they went ape shit in the opposite direction. They're all obese now. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple things I'll say. Number one, you can, there are fun snacks and meals that your kid won't feel totally weird pulling out uh, and eating, you know, uh, jerky. So a lot of kids like that. Cheese, um, fruit, nuts. Uh, those things are all pretty good. And then here's the other part of it. Children are pretty damn resilient, especially if they're active. And if they have a good breakfast and a good dinner, sometimes it's okay that lunch is a little bit more of the fun kind of stuff that they're going to eat with their friends. Like they might have some chicken nuggets or some pizza rolls or whatever, you know, once a day or one, you know, every other day. Breakfast and lunch, if those are good. And here's in my family, the majority of our calories usually come in dinner. That's our meal together. And that's mm -hmm. the one I have the most control over. So I know if they have a little bit here, a little bit there – but then we have a good dinner. I'm feeling okay. Yeah, that, that's where we get like uh, our our peace of mind is is really the the dinner like that we all share together. We can control pretty much uh, what what what's going to you know be consumed there. Um, it to be honest, it's not that hard. I mean, if you want to prep ahead of time and you want to make sure like your kids have the certain foods, like you can pack them this. Obviously, they're gonna uh, they're gonna go to school and they'll probably get stuff from their friends or whatever. They might not eat the whole thing, but I mean that's out of your control. So you just gotta keep you know uh, basically focusing on what you can control and what you can kind of prep ahead of time and, and allow them to uh, to eat. It. I, I would worry less about like. Um, you know, basically like how, how their, their, their friends are influencing them. We had to kind of relieve that because there, there's even some negotiations that had to happen on some days where there was like a pizza, you know, day where the, they were, they got really excited for that. And so, okay, that meal is accounted for, you know, at school, they're going to eat this and we just got to deal with that. We're going to make up uh, a nice healthy meal when they get home for dinner. And, you know, and this is also going to happen at, you know, grandma and grandpa's house. Oh, Dude. And, and their friend's house and when they go to stay overnight. And so it's just, it you better prepare yourself now for the fact that you just, you can only influence based off how you eat and how you're all the normal ways that you have programmed to eat. Uh, whether or not that's going to last is, is up to the kid. I'm glad you said that just because I, uh, I really wanted to hear what you both had to say about this. Obviously I don't have a child that's in school yet, um, but I do think about this, right? Um, and I, the family, right. And that's a great example. Like, I don't think it's that much different than 
going over to grandma and grandpa's house or whatever because it presents the same type of challenges, right? They're at somebody else's place where there's other food that's being eaten, everybody else. So the the way that Katrina and I do it right now is we when we are prepping our food, she's also prepping Max's food at the same time. So like last night we did like a uh, Katrina does this bison and rice dish that we really like. And the only real difference is this right now we do like seasoning and all kinds of stuff, spices and things in our dishes where he eats more bland food right now. So she'll always separate like, you know, a few ounces of the bison. And we have these little things that she, you know, Tupperwares them in and he's got his bison, his rice, and then like this smashed up avocado. And that's going to be like his meal for the next two or three days. It's in the refrigerator. And if we take him over to his, his grandmother's house, we bring that for her. Like, here's his lunch. Here's what, here's what he's going to eat at this time. And like, and we just tell them, can I control everything that goes in his mouth? Probably not, nor am I going to, I'm not going to worry about it, but I feel like if, and then the same thing goes for when he gives out, goes out to school, like I'm not going to fight him if his friend lets him bite into his, you know, you know, what with a lunchable cracker snack, I'm not going to freak out. Or, I mean, it is what it is, but I'm going to prepare the same way that I prepare right now. Like he'll go to lunch. I mean, every, as far as I know, every school has a microwave for him to reheat his, his meal. If I give him what we had last night at dinner left over, which is how I eat all the time. And he sees that I eat like that all the time. I don't think it'll be that weird, especially if it tastes good. Mm-hmm. If it tastes good. He likes it. He had it at dinner the night before with us. And now he's got it in a glass yeah. bowl that he can reheat the next day at school. Uh, that's how I, I plan to try and control it. And when the the days of pizza days come or a friend he wants, I don't think I'm going to be a Nazi over it. I think I'm going to allow him to do that intermittently. As long as I am feeding him as best I can at home, he's a majority that means his food is controlled by me. And then I'm going to send him to school with those same types of foods. And then when those things happen, when he eats it here and there, I don't think I'm yeah. really going to worry too much. What you much. don't want to do is you don't want to demonize uh, right. food because you're going to create, uh, you potentially could create this rebellious attitude around mm-hmm. food. You know, we talked earlier about you eating ice cream. Part of that you say is because when you were a kid, if the ice cream came, it was gone. Yeah. So then when you grow up, you're like, I'm eating ice cream every single night. Right. This is a pattern you could build in your kid if you make it super too strict and you demonize foods. <clears throat> so the you know way you teach them balance is it's kind of not a big deal. And they have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, not a big deal. And when we pre- prepare meals... It's just how we prepare it. It's just it's a it's a healthy. Food. You're also shaping his palate right now, right? Especially so, when they're really little. Yes. Yeah. So that's the way I look that's at the it. Crucial time. That's so. Here's like so. There's um. You know, I talk about my two friends who have kids that are a year and a year and a half ahead of us, and something that Katrina and I have been adamant about with Max is we have not introduced any sweets. No cookies, no tape. Like, and I know this is a thing for parents and grandparents. They think it's so cute and funny to let a, a, a toddler lick an ice cream cone and then look at the face afterwards. I know. Because there's not a single kid that doesn't go, oh, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. literally they're, they're, you could see they, get, they light up like a Christmas tree. And then what I see happening is I see my friends using that as reward to get their kids to do things they want them to do. Oh, mm-hmm. Say they're being fussy at night, they don't want to do this, or they don't want to put their pajamas on or what like that. If you want that cookie after dinner, then you need to do this. And they start using these pleasure foods as re- a reward system, and they start training their kid before he even knows to ask for a cookie or ice cream. And then you wonder why it's such a struggle for you when they're two, three, four, and five. Right. Where right now, like I'm, while I'm controlling everything that goes in his mouth, literally, it just that is an absolute no. Like I, I can resist the oh, I want to see what my kid looks like when he bites into a cookie. I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to wait till he can ask me, which is probably means he's going to be three or four at the bare minimum. Where and then can, it's different, and then it's different, yeah, and then you, by that time he's had three years of consistently eating these healthy foods. What will probably happen, and I've seen parents that are really good about this, is the kid thinks it's too sweet. Dude, I give he my, tries half yep, of it yep. and then he, he he puts it away. I give my kids a so soda, soda and yeah, ice cream. Yeah, I've done that. Or I'll give my kids a soda. Actually, not even a soda. One of those Izzy drinks, which is not even a soda. It's like less sugar and smaller. And I'll I'll say, yeah, you can have one. And then my daughter will bring it to me halfway. I don't want any more. Yeah. Just on her own. Right. Because we didn't give them a ton of sugar. No, it's... And you know the palate? They start to develop the palate in utero. Yes. And then uh, when the mom breastfeeds. So based this off of the This is why it's so important for women that are pregnant right now to do your best. And I know the health of the baby matters most and getting calories. And I don't want to make any moms feel guilty that have weird cravings. I get all that stuff. But I mean, the conversation that Katrina and I had during that time... 
is, uh, I, you know, and she asked me, like, you know, how would you handle it if you were pregnant, right? So we play that game. And I said, you know, the way I look at it is, like, when I was prepping for competing, like, none of that was fun. Like, I didn't enjoy eating these these foods all the time, but I had a goal. I had this goal that I'm going to be the best my version of myself. I don't think there's a time in, in my life that I could think that would be more important than getting ready to set the, the, the tone for my child. Like that's, that supersedes any stupid trophy or saying that I yeah. work to it. So the way I would, I would be competitive with myself if I, if I w were to carry a baby of like, I got nine months, I'm going to discipline myself to be Sound just like such a dude. I know, I know. Right. And I know there's <laughs> you women, don't even know. I know yeah. there, I know there's women, like it's so hard, hard for a guy yeah. to have, but this is I'm, what I'm telling you is the conversation is I had with Katrina, right? Yeah. She asked me like, how would you mentally prepare yourself for going in. And I said, I would look at it the same way, only it's even more important because yeah. it's my child. It, it continues yeah, it for sure. continues with breastfeeding too. That I watched a documentary on it and they said that they start to develop their palate a lot through the through breast milk, through what the mom you know will eat. Now Jessica's been pretty good about this. She'll eat like a spoonful of fish eggs sometimes in the morning for the omega. I mean it's fish eggs, you know? Yeah. But you know, hopefully my kid is born and eventually yeah. will like to eat fish. I know I hated it when I was a well, kid. Well what I can yeah, tell you sacrifice. Right, what I can yeah. tell you right now, and maybe I'm an anomaly or whatever, Max eats everything. Every single thing we put in front of him, he eats. Mm. And he loves vegetables and he eats all the meats. Like he eats everything that we give him and he's not been introduced to any any sugar except for what comes from fruit. Mm -hmm. Like the, his his diet has been that way and it hasn't been a fight or a struggle with us at all. And I think a lot of that has to do with Katrina was dialed all the way through pregnancy, all the way through breastfeeding. And then when we introduced foods, we introduced all these whole foods to him and that's how it's been since day one. Have you had him try a lemon yet? I don't think she's <laughs> done a lemon. That's fun. If you want to see a reaction. Yeah, I don't think she's done a lemon. Give a little kid a lemon slice and just watch their faces. Yeah, I was I was I, I was actually eating uh I gave him his first like dab of like salsa, right? And you saw his face get like that, right? Where he was like, whoa, that was way <laughs> yeah. too spicy. I, he was sitting in my lap and I was Katrina made me a quesadilla and I was dipping it in salsa and he, he you could tell he really wanted it. I'm like, like and she was like, Don't let him have that. And I'm like, oh, I just want to see his face when he <laughs> yeah. takes yeah. a little bit of salsa, right? <laughs> that's, and, a, that's a good time. There's yeah. this video on YouTube of this little kid who he gets an onion because he thinks it's an apple. Oh, no. Did you see this video? Uh, and he bites into it and he's like, and his eyes are like, ah, but he keeps eating it. He keeps seeing the sun. <laughs> he's trying. It's like, different, but ah, it's a great maybe video. it'll get better. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video and audio. So if you're listening to the podcast, but you'd like to watch it as well, check us out on YouTube. You can also find all of us on Instagram individually. You can find Doug, the producer at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Me at Mind Pump Me. You know, talking about the hip extension, that's you have to keep in mind as a, a trainer and a coach that when we're training clients that come in that say they want to build muscle, they want to burn fat, that we are also a big part of our responsibility is to, you know, help them with their posture, mm -hmm. work on lo longevity, address the health in their joints and mobility. Like